Well, welcome to the Platform Launchers podcast. We're grateful to have you guys with us. And we have a very special guest and I guess you could say experience that we're going to be doing here together as a community tonight. Once in a while, we ask members to volunteer to do something very brave. And one of our members, MJ James, who hosts the the, uh, the platform and the podcast called Burned Out Business Mom, she's going to tell us a little bit about that, but she has volunteered very, very bravely, I must say, to be our hot seat guest tonight. And so I have a series of things that I'm going to ask MJ and I'm going to get the the ball rolling here. We're going to talk about this and hopefully give her some ideas and suggestions that will be beneficial for everything she's already building online. Maybe there'll be an idea that we can uh, just kind of throw her way or kind of spark there, but she's already got some momentum here with what she's building. And uh, along the way here, you're also going to be hearing from some of the members of Platform Launchers. And I ask them to just introduce themselves when they ask a question or have, have a thought for MJ and uh, maybe even just tell you about their platform real quick or just tell you where to find it so you could follow up with any of that if you hear a name or a platform referenced here. But first off, MJ, welcome to the hot seat. You feel ready to go? Thank you so much. I absolutely am. I'm really excited to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. I, I think this is great. I always appreciate brave people that, that hop on the hot seat here. Jennifer Harshman did it a few months ago. And prior to her, Carl, uh, Kyle Martin jumped on the hot seat. And so this is our third hot seat call. And uh, I know MJ is ready to go. So MJ, all right, your, your platform is the Burned Out Business Mom. And I just yes. want to know for starters, like tell us a little bit about your platform and how you got started with this as a, a segment of the population that you really want to help. Sure. Um, I mean, most of this sprung from my own experience with being a burned out business mom. Um, you know, it was really tough. I have three kids, you know, pandemic hit. I was working a very high stress job, um, trying to homeschool three kids. You know, my husband was a wager in the time. So it was really <laughs> very rough. And I super duper burnt out. Um, and when the doctor's sitting there and you're in your 30s and they're telling you, hey, we're going to tap you in for a heart attack. It's happening. If you don't get your life together, you kind of have to, you know, take a step back and say, what am I doing? And it is a little different because I wasn't just burnt out with my job. I was burnt out with my entire life, like everything mm -hmm. that I was doing, the entire way I was living my life. So um, it started me on my own personal journey. And then I started working with clients as a ghostwriter and consistently with almost every client I had, they were all talking about the same thing. They were all burnt out. They were all exhausted. They had no clarity in their life. They didn't feel significant anymore. They didn't know how to find things for themselves that made them feel joy anymore. And they were completely just swimming from one day to the next. So um, this idea for the Burned Out Business Mom platform really came from all of that. And I just feel a huge calling to try to help people figure that balance out for themselves, find their clarity again, and live a life that they're happy with most days, right? Because sometimes we're not happy every day, but most <laughs> days I would like people to feel happy every day, balanced every day. So that's, that's excellent. And, and that kind of answers what my, my follow-up question was going to be there. I was going to ask, how do you hope <clears throat> to help people? And so, you know, in hearing what you're saying there, you're saying you, you're, you're trying to help people find balance. You're trying to uh, serve and, and, and be an assistant to those that are really struggling with burnout. So, or an encouragement, I should probably say to those that are, that are really dealing with that so that they don't continue to go down that path. Cause you can identify with it. You know what it feels like you've been down that road. So, Absolutely. uh, all right. So that, that's very helpful. That's very useful. And I'm certain that there are those that are listening that can, that would find what you're discussing very helpful. So my question for you in the spirit of helping is, how can we help you today? As you think about the platform that you're developing here, and maybe you could even share about like your long-term vision for it, uh, even as you try and answer this question, but how, how can we as a group help you today with what you're already building? So I had a bunch of different pieces that I was thinking about. Ultimately, um, I think... Ultimately, I would like to run a community and maybe offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching um, and, and maybe even speak at some different you know, places or different opportunities would be an option. But that's my long-term goal. Mm -hmm. Right now, immediately, I have the podcast. I wrote a 30-day devotional that um, specifically is about empowering significance and clarity through faith. 
So mm -hmm. I figured a quick 30 day thing would be great to kind of build trust with people, let them know that I understand and I see them and I can relate to what they're going through. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I thought that I was on the right track with that. I was like, okay, I'm going to launch the book. I'm going to launch mm -hmm. a podcast. I'm going to launch the website and it's all going to, you know, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Then I started to get like a little nervous about launching them all at once. <laughs> and then I had a call with somebody today who was like, don't launch it as a book, launch it as an email sequence. And I was like, oh, that's kind of brilliant because their, their point was if I launched it as an email sequence and I get them engaged for 30 days, at the end of the 30 days, they're going to be like, I don't want this to stop. How can I get more? And so they'll be inspired to join the community. So I kind of feel like I'm switching gears, but I still feel like I'm swimming out here and I don't know what I'm doing. So, so that, all right. All right. So that, that's, that's a, uh, a great comment. You know what my response to that suggestion will be? What? You know me well enough that you could probably even guess if I, if I wasn't putting you on the spot, but my, my response is why not both? Why not both? Why not an email sequence and a book and a blog and podcasts and all, why, why not both? Right. Or why not? Right, all of it's the all above? repurposed. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause someone that might read a book maybe won't even be on your email list. And someone that's on your email list might appreciate having everything curated together into a book. So just kind of something to keep in the back of your mind. You know, you, it doesn't have to be, sometimes these things get presented as either or things. And I look at it and I say, you've already done the work, use it 10 different ways because some people like accessing the content differently. Some people are readers, some people are auditory and they prefer listening. So just kind of throw it out there, right? Would you, would you change that up? in any of those, or would you just keep copying and pasting that same? So I have, the format is like a really, so I have a Bible quote at the top, a little bit of a story, um, questions to reflect on, and then um, strengthen your significance at the bottom, which kind of leaves them with either, you know, like a prayer to say, or an action item to go and do for that day. So it's really quick. The most pages are between 500 and 700 pages, it's it, or 700 words, it's not really long. Um, so would you copy and paste those in all those different venues or would you? What I usually do, because, um, well, you know, when people are reading email, they usually don't want to read something that's super lengthy via email, right? So I usually just give two to three paragraphs in an email and then a link to read more. And then that takes people over to my blog. And then I, then they could read it all as a blog formatted just on that page. And then at the bottom of that page, I think I'd have an Amazon affiliate link to your book if people wanted to get the whole book. That's probably what I would do with that. But I have a question for you even before this, because we're getting highly specific in one particular area. And the when we, when we do these hot seats, I like to kind of reference the five Ds of platform development, even just by way of recap. Now, you already answered the first one. Uh, I think you did. You could clarify for me if you did. But we, the first D is discovering your message. Now, you said from your experience of burning out and all the things that you were experiencing that, you know, that really motivated you to put something together that you think would help other moms as they're possibly dealing with the same thing. But I'm also curious with that one, what kind of help do people seek from you? Um, basically, it, it's a lot of times it's which questions am I asking? What piece am I reviewing? How do I get to the pieces of my life that I need to um, either strengthen or just say, yeah, this part doesn't belong here. I just got stuck doing this as a bad habit. So all those things that kind of require a mindset shift and habit changes, um, those things that lead up to that. I find a lot of people struggle with. They don't, they don't know where to start. They don't know how to dive in. They don't like to ask those tough questions. And because nobody else is handholding them, they're not accountable. So that's mm -hmm. cool, right? Like I could just say, I'm working on this, but <laughs> they're not really working on it. Like nothing's mm -hmm. getting better. So I kind of have a little bit of a system in my head that um, kind of takes them through like asking, reviewing those questions and then you know, revising things within their lives and, you know, putting those things into action. So there's like so people, a step process. Okay. So people are asking <laughs> you for help in that specific <laughs> area. They're asking you for yes. help when they feel burned out and you've put yourself out there as somebody that wants to speak to that subject. And so you're starting to become a trusted voice on that from your own experiences and from the content that you're producing. Right. 
So it seems like a good fit. Okay. So let's move to the second D. The second D is delivering your content. Now you started talking about some of the ways that you're going to deliver content there. You're talking about email sequences. You're talking about books. You're talking about um, blog posts. You're also talking about podcasts. Mm -hmm. What, where do you, I, I, first of all, I believe that you should do all of the above eventually. I think it's useful to do all of those eventually, but I don't think you have to do all of them on the same day. And I think this is where a lot of people get overwhelmed. And I was even sensing, I know those that are listening to the podcast can't see MJ right now, but when you were listing all those things, you were looking, you know, you had that look on your face, like this is a lot, right? That's a lot. Yes. That is a lot. So I, I do all of those things with, uh, with my platforms, but I didn't do all that on day one. Those were things that after a year of doing it one way, I'd look at it and I'd say, you know, I ought to add the other thing. Now, I took the long approach to do this, and I'm trying to help people do it much faster than I did. But I think one of the things that we have to kind of get back to from time to time is just a reminder, doesn't have to be done on the same day. You know, you can take two days to do all this, MJ. You don't have to do it on one day. <laughs> Maybe you should take more than two days. But uh, That was another question I have, like, what order? What order? All right. Yeah, like, what order is going to build the best, right? Because my first thing, no matter what I might enjoy doing, my first piece is to get that trust from other people. So All right. what is the most effective way to do I love that this, to start? Yeah, I love this question. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my opinion. And then, I, then this is a great spot where I want to open the mic to anyone from uh, the community here that might have a, a, an insight or a comment or even just a personal testimonial about what they have experienced in trying to do the same thing that you're doing. This is, this is what I emphasize. I usually tell people that if they could start with one piece of written content, so usually the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to start with a blog post, because from that blog post, you can make a whole bunch of things. You can make an email newsletter, right? You just copy and paste part of that blog post into an email and then put the link to read more, and then that could send people over to the blog. You can also turn that into a portion of a chapter of a book or an entire chapter if it's long enough. So that's another thing that you could do. And then you also have a script there that you can record into a podcast. You can make that kind of your, uh, you know, just your script that you're using as an outline as you're talking through different things and, and you're recording. So it gives you a variety of options there if you start with that one piece of written content. So I personally would not start with a book. I would not start with a, a podcast. I wouldn't start with an email sequence. I would start with a blog post. But let me hear from someone else in the group here who, who wants to jump in and, and maybe share a little something, a thought, an insight, an experience. I'd be happy to. All right. Tell us who you are, first of all. Okay. I'm Jennifer Harshman, and I help people to create and repurpose written content over at harshmanservices.com. All right. And it may sound counterintuitive, but I also say don't start with a book because it's a massive undertaking and it takes time. So you can start with that smaller chunk, like a blog post, and you can turn 50 blog posts into a book. So start small and do something that you can repurpose like that. So that, that would also be um, my suggestion to you. Excellent. What, what do you think about that, MJ? What do you think about that? No, it, it makes sense. It does make sense when you guys are saying it. I'm like, oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so much smaller. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay, you, perfect. You're so this is this is where some of us get bogged down in the very same spot you're at because when you you can see these faces around the room and you know people in our community here and you know that people that tend to get involved in platform development and some of the things that we're doing tend to be ambitious people and sometimes we overreach, right? We we try and do everything on the same day. And so I I think it's kind of useful to give yourself permission to just excel at one thing for starters, you know, get your website up and start blogging, just one piece of content at a time, 500 words, you know, something like that. Just get, get something up there and then develop it from there. Um, yeah, Jennifer, that, go for it. Yeah, um, please do. So one thing that you can do to get ideas, because one of the number one questions I get is like, well, what should I write about? Um, gather the questions that people ask you the things that they're coming to you for, the specific things that they're asking about or telling you that are stressing them out, 
gather those, write one blog post about each one, and you'll start to build your content that way. Excellent suggestion. Yeah, your your tribe, your the people that are using your content will, in many respects, tell you what you need to create next. And you don't have to think about the next 10 things you have to create. You just have to think about the next thing. So create a blog post and then be like, all right, what's my next one blog post? And I always encourage people, see if you could get one out per week. I think, you know, knowing how fast you write, MJ, I bet you you could get a blog post up per week. What do you think? Well, I have, I, I have about nine, I think there's 98 on my list right now of like <laughs> topics. And of those 98, I've written, if not the entire thing, at least a giant chunk of about 30 of them. So I have it like that plus the book stuff. Like I have the content to be able to put out. I'm just not just a matter putting it out yet. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a matter of uh, pulling the trigger on it and actually doing it. Right. But that that's so right. funny. You you just kind of illustrated, you just illustrated the point, you know, the whole overachiever, uh, you know, overextended type of uh, entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I just wonder how, why you get burned out, MJ. I just don't understand. Like, <laughs> no, there's so much time in my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, all right. Well, well, let's, all right, let's, let's see if we could jump through a couple of the other things here and, and, uh, and talk about the next part here, developing your tribe. So your, your main, the main group you're trying to connect with are burned out business moms. So how do you hope to connect with them. And I want to open it up to the group in just a second to offer some suggestions for MJ on how she might be able to connect with a tribe of people that would really identify with her message. So MJ, for starters, for you, how do you, how do you hope to connect there? Okay. So there was, there was two ways that I was thinking of when I first started with this idea. So the first one was like in-person meetups and just starting like a little meetup group and you know, we all get together and chit chat. My personal issue with that right now is that I'm in limbo with where I'm living. I would hate to cultivate a whole group of people and then be like, peace out guys, I'm moving in a couple <laughs> months. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't feel that that's going to be very, you know, trust building and credible. So I kind of wanted to put a pause on the in-person stuff. And then it was suggested to me to try to get on more blogs and to try to do, or not more blogs. Yeah. Ghost. I'm uh, sorry. Do like um, stuff guest for, for other people's blogs, right? Guest yes, posting. There absolutely. You go. That and podcasts was the two main ways that were suggested to me. And I thought, well, that's good. That's really awesome. I don't know how to get on the podcast yet, but it's on my to-do list. to figure You realize that out. you're on a podcast <laughs> right now, so you must know, know something about but, it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but like to get in front of the ones for the people with the audience I'm trying to reach. True, you know what I mean? Like, true. I don't know. I, I haven't quite figured that piece out, but that's on my list. So I'll take suggestions. All right. You take suggestions. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to offer something to you as a gift. And then I'm going to open up the mic here for, for others to, to maybe chime in. But the, the thing that I'm going to offer as a gift, are you ready for this? So because yeah. you're brave being on the hot seat tonight, if for starters, you would like, so you're here as a guest on the podcast, but if you submit, if you send to me a guest blog post, I'm going to post it at platformlaunchers.com uh, just as a thank you for you being brave tonight. And we're going to link it over to your site. So uh, awesome. when you have something ready that you want up there, send it over to me and I'm going to post it right there on the website. And uh, thank we're you very much. See if we could drive some traffic over to your site as well. But what, what are some of the others on the call here think? What uh, useful ideas or thoughts can, uh, can you offer MJ that, that might be helpful and practical for her as she's trying to develop a tribe? How can she connect with other burned out business moms? Well, Facebook groups. Okay. All right. Facebook groups. That's one good suggestion. All right. Any other suggestions? That's awesome. MJ, have you heard about Help a Reporter Out? No. Okay, so um, I think it's the website now is helpareporter.com. Um, they used it used to be a different name, but um, you can sign up as an expert to be quoted in different media, or you can also sign up as a reporter or a content creator looking for other people to interview for your podcast, your blog post, whatever it is. So. I am on there as both creator and expert. 
you can do both sides of it. So wow. um, it's, it's very heavy on the emails. Um, you'll get a lot, but you can just scan through quickly and see if any of the things apply to you. And if so, then respond right away and you could get featured or you could get, um, you could send wow. in a query and get help too. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. That's a great resource. Very good. That's a good suggestion. Any, anyone else uh, have a, a helpful suggestion for how, how she could maybe connect with a, a tribe of people that are already thinking along these lines? So we've got guest blog posts. We've got guest podcasts. We've got help a reporter out, Facebook groups. Uh, let's see. We got, oh, we're hearing from uh, uh, Tony Slaybaugh. Let me just read this because he can't uh, audibly share with us. But Tony is the host of the Hello Good Neighbor podcast. And he, he suggests go live on Facebook. So go live. So live video is what he's suggesting is suggesting go live on Facebook. The algorithm loves it. And he says, maybe delve into the devotional a bit. So the devotional that you created, maybe that would be something that that could be helpful content that you could suggest there or, or offer there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tony. That's a great idea too. Very good. All right. Let's jump to the next one here. The next D is this. And this one we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on here because this is something that is a much later piece, I think, to your platform, but let's at least acknowledge it. Deploy your team. So, you know, when when we're when our platforms start to grow, it kind of gets to a point, a platform can outgrow you or outgrow your ability to do all the things necessary to maintain it. So have you ever thought about I guess I'll just ask one simple question related to this. Do you envision your platform ever outgrowing your ability to maintain it solo? Absolutely. I already figured, like the other day when I was trying to do the podcast and I was trying to make a recording, I was like, oh, okay. I called my two teenagers in. I was like, you see this here? You're going to have to learn how to edit this because I'm, <laughs> I'm not taking this on. <laughs> you're like, this you guys are going to have to you learn. You want to eat dinner? You're going to do this. <laughs> That's okay, right. Cool. Everybody good? Okay. Yeah. I will keep you alive. I will keep you in a home. <laughs> you will keep my audio That's sounding it. excellent. Good. That's it. <laughs> right. I like that. But yeah, that's something to just kind of think about. And I, I think sometimes, especially after we've invested ourselves in a platform for a long time, it could be hard to let let go of some of the reins a little bit. And um, and so that that might be something to just keep in mind, you know, maybe with editing or some of the other things, but it sounds like it's something you're already starting to think about. All right, let's jump to the final one here. And this is where we'll finish up our our hot seat here with MJ for the purpose of the podcast, although we're going to have some more follow up conversation when we get to the Q&A, but that's members only MJ. So uh, so those listening on the podcast, they, they have to become a member if they're going to hear some of that. But uh, for the finale here for the podcast portion of our call tonight. Um, let's talk about deriving your income, because if you're going to be able to do a platform long term, and if you're going to be able to devote time to it. Typically, there needs to be a way that you can at least derive some income from it, at least to pay for your hosting costs and, and things like that, uh, you know, unless you're independently wealthy and, and just feel like, you know, spending all that forever. But it's kind of nice when your audience joins you in helping to actually, you know, fund the content that you're putting out there. And so have you thought about the idea of monetizing what you're building? Um small in, in a in small ways I think like I I know the big picture that that I need to get to with affiliates and I know that there could be advertising on the podcast there could be the buy you know buy me a cup of coffee mm -hmm. um I didn't know that I could put that on my blog though oh yeah yeah that. you can put so that there. that's very exciting I can put that there too um yeah and I, I do want to create that community where it would be a paid membership to do it because I, mm -hmm. I do feel like I want serious people inside i don't want to waste my time with people who are not going to take action so i would really totally. like to to walk somebody through those steps and then have them be like you did it all right rock on like go enjoy your life i'm here if you need me like oh, that yeah. type of thing so um those are the those were the basic incomes that i was thinking of okay I don't know so how affiliates that would be reality okay so if you mentioned affiliates you mentioned crowdfunding through things like buy me a coffee and you mentioned the possibility of a membership in the in the future. And I think probably pretty early on, there's something else that would fit pretty well with your platform. And you you kind of alluded to it earlier. You may have even said it directly. Um, but coaching. 
when you're talking about like burnout, you know, how many of us, so on the call here, how many of us have ever gone through a season of burnout? Just raise your hand. All right. I, I, I'll raise my hand like a bunch of times. because I'm like, I've gone through it so many times. Right. And, uh, and sometimes you, you really can feel stuck with that. And usually, you know, usually to, to kind of get out of that, you really, you, you really need outside help. Usually you need somebody to kind of pull you out of it and, or people to surround you and help you out with that. And so I I'm curious from, you know, first of all, on, on the call here, uh, raise your hand for this. If you've ever done any form of coaching, whether it was paid coaching or volunteer coaching or anything like that, if you've ever done something like that. All right. Um, let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, bring Rich Avery here into the conversation here. His hand was one of the hands that was up. Rich, uh, tell us who you are. Tell us about your uh, platform. And then I have a question for you connected to MJ here. Uh, yeah, sure. Rich Avery, my uh, podcast and website is more than a pastor.com. All right. And so, uh, a big part of, what you offer is uh, you, you, I know you already offer coaching. You already do coaching mm -hmm. for, for different people. So what insight could you give to MJ if she wants to add a coaching tier to what she's building online? Well, that's a great question. Um, for me, it made sense to offer a, like a 30 minute um, clarity call or just initial consultation with people. Sometimes people don't know exactly what they need, if they if they need coaching or if they really want it. And, um, and maybe they're just stuck and they just don't know what the next step is. So it seemed uh, to make sense to me to offer an initial, like some people do like a 15 minute or maybe 20 minute or, or 30. Some people do a free hour, but uh, it seems like within 30 minutes, you ought to be able to know, uh, are they really interested in a long-term coaching relationship or is it more just uh, uh, just some initial guidance and uh, so for me it, it's to just offer that with no strings attached I'm not trying to sell you something I'm just trying to help you get clarity on where you're at right now where do you want to be and what's your best next step and then if they're interested in something more beyond that then have another call uh, or conversation where you can talk more about what your coaching might look like you know if they really are a good a good fit for you so that seemed to work uh, it makes sense to me Excellent. I think that's great counsel. And that that's also useful counsel for you, MJ, too, as you're uh, making this more of, of your routine. You know, this is something you're going to be doing more and more. And uh, I always look at that. So, um, you know, when it comes to counseling or coaching or anything like that, the more reps you get, the better the better you get at it. And the more you start to notice patterns, that's the other thing I've noticed because everybody thinks their situation is unique. Everybody thinks that they're so different from everyone else. And what the coach understands over time is no, we're not, <laughs> we're all the same. We're, we're, we're like in many respects, we're just the same. We just may, we may call issues different, but we start to notice patterns and, and, uh, and really we're, we're all wrestling with the same stuff. And, um, and I, I suspect MJ, and I say this as a word of encouragement as we finish up here tonight. I suspect that when you start offering coaching and word gets around and you get a few testimonials from people that are using it, I have a high suspicion that that's going to be something that people enjoy receiving from you because you're very enthusiastic, optimistic, and empathetic person. You know, you're the type of person that that it becomes obvious that you care about other people. And I've also noticed that you seem to have a gift for encouragement. That's something I've noticed just in interacting with you in the time that I've known you. I've seen you do that for multiple people, including me. And so when people are feeling burned out or feeling discouraged, that's something that's highly welcomed. And uh, I would encourage you to use that gift for the people that actually reach out to you and, and seek your counsel. So as we wrap this up here, MJ, how bad was this? Was this torture to be on the hot seat? It was not torture. I mean, in my head, I really thought this was going to be a lot worse. You okay. guys are great. <laughs> you, you realize that the group's just here to encourage and, and uh, not berate you. Yeah, no, you, you did a great job. And I, I'm excited about the platform that you're building. So where can people, if they're listening to the podcast here, where can they connect with you? And, and how can they find all the things that MJ James is offering online? Sure. So my website is published. The burned out business mom.com is up and running. So you can find me there. Awesome. The burned out business mom.com. 
be sure to check that out and uh, let MJ know that you heard her on the Platform Launchers podcast and be sure to utilize the resources that that she's putting out there. Super helpful stuff. And she has the desire to be just a, a super helpful person. But that is going to uh, finish us up as far as our podcast today. And if you're listening, we would love to welcome you to join us for one of these calls live. We have a really good time each week gathering together, investing in each other's platforms. And so if you want to find out more information about that and how you could just take a two-week test drive and try this all out for free, just visit platformlaunchers.com. And we look forward to meeting you very soon.